Imagine you were on your way home when you suddenly noticed someone setting his car on fire. How would you react? You would probably think of him as a fool. But what if someone sets fire to a million pounds? How would you feel now? You would undoubtedly become enraged. Many thoughts would begin to enter your mind. He could have used the money for better things, he could have contributed this money to a charity, he could have donated to a school or a hospital for the needy. You might start linking this money with success and freedom. Well, this happened for real. In 1994, two artists from the K Foundation, Jimmy Cotty and Bill Drummond set a million pounds on fire on a Scottish island. In an interview, when asked why they were doing this, they responded that we were simply performing a form of art. We haven't harmed anything, we've only burned some pieces of paper that were made by humans. We haven't destroyed any natural resources, so why are people upset about it? It turns out that when it comes to money, humans do not think logically. So, in this video, we'll go through 5 lessons that will teach you how to turn your brain into your financial friend rather than your enemy. But, before we begin, if you have found this video useful so far, please hit the like button and subscribe. Lesson number 1. We behave irrationally when it comes to money. When we enjoy doing something, a chemical in our brain called dopamine is released. A study was conducted in which, participants were given free shopping vouchers, and the researchers found that this elicited the same response from them as when eating their favorite food. In the same way, our brains also feel rewarded when we get money, this causes the release of dopamine, which makes us feel good right away. We easily become addicted to that feeling and lose sight of delayed satisfaction, causing us to desire things immediately and be unwilling to wait. Therefore, we should learn to control our feelings if we wish to use money wisely. Lesson number two. Humans are not logical beings. If someone were to ask you how much money you have in your wallet, you would probably only count the cash you have, while ignoring the amount on your debit and credit cards. We humans only consider cash as actual money. We treat cash and credit cards differently. A study was conducted in the United States in which the expenditures of 1,000 households were tracked for six months. It was discovered that individuals who use cash spent less on unhealthy items such as junk food, whereas those who use debit or credit cards spent more on unhealthy food. It occurs because when we pay cash, we feel as if we are genuinely spending our money, and we feel guilty for purchasing unnecessary items. On the other hand, when we use a credit card to pay, we don't experience that guilt and we start spending on things without giving them a second thought. So, whenever you want to buy something, always pay with cash rather than a credit card. When you see your money leaving your hands, you will start spending less on unnecessary things and will begin to value your money. Would you rather pay with a credit card or cash? Please express your thoughts in the comments section below. Lesson number 3. Mental accounting. Suppose you went to buy some groceries. When you asked about the price of strawberry jam, you found that it was $2 more than what you had budgeted. On the other hand, when you go out for dinner you are willing to tip the waiter $50 without giving it a second thought. You are the same person who chose not to purchase a jam bottle simply because it cost $2 more, yet when it comes to your lifestyle expenses, you are irresponsible with your money. We automatically make an account in our brains for everything. Such as the account for everyday expenses, vacation expenses, shopping expenses, and medical expenses. We also apply a budget to those accounts. There is also a theory known as relative thinking of money. It states that while making economic decisions, people emphasize relative differences rather than absolute differences. For example, when a person is considering spending $1,000 on a product, a $10 discount feels less. However, the same $10 discount appears huge when he is considering paying only $100. 
So what we learn from this lesson is that we do accounting in our brains automatically and decide if something is affordable or not. And, because of the relative thinking patterns, the discount can make you either satisfied or dissatisfied, depending on the total amount of the item we are buying. So, always look for things with low prices and large discounts. This will help you stay motivated. Lesson number 4. Confirmation Bias Confirmation bias refers to our tendency to seek out and prioritize information that confirms our pre-existing beliefs. For instance, if we are certain that a product is good and has a lot of benefits, we may choose to overlook any negative information about it. This is best seen in advertisements. When a renowned person or celebrity promotes a product, you are quickly convinced that the product is good and you are willing to spend hundreds of dollars on it. Additionally, you never pay heed to any negative comments about it. Therefore, whenever you want to buy something, make sure that you are not doing so out of confirmation bias and that you genuinely need that product. Lesson number 5. Can money make you happy? We all know that money is necessary for our basic needs. There was a time when someone who had a computer at home was considered rich. However, it has now become a common household item. In the past, we used to walk to the phone booth when we wanted to make a call, but now we all have cell phones, and we can make a call in the blink of an eye. Because all these luxuries are now easily within our means. This means that something that used to make you happy a few years ago might not do so now. The question is, can money make you happy? We generally believe that money is the solution to all problems. Well, money possesses both forms of power. That is positive and negative. We can take the example of lottery winners. Most of them go bankrupt a few years after winning the lottery. That's because they have a poor mindset and they lack financial knowledge. So learn to be happy with the money you have now, and if you want to get rich, you must be patient. Because overnight success usually comes with negative consequences that might increase your mental stress and make your life unhappy. If you want to know how to reprogram your brain's thinking power, then watch the video suggested on the left. This video was based on the book, Mind Over Money, by Claudia Hammond. Subscribe to my channel if you want more videos on self-improvement and personal finance.